Sunday, fun day in full effect. What is up, everyone? I forgot to turn the phantom power on my microphone, but we are good to go. Welcome to the stream. Zemish is here. Mr. Utter, Terminal Crotrot, S. Janchow, Ban1103, Mac of the Suggester, Greg of Florida and Texas Foosballer, kicking open the doors to the VIP lounge. Maka with the resub, one year of subscriptions. Maka, thank you. Thank you so much for all your support, Maka. It's incredible, dude. I really, really appreciate it. Quantic CD32. We're going to turn our flashlights on and light up the Sweden, baby. D Mackey828 wandering into the VIP lounge, my main man. <laughs> Terminals here. Gemini Knight throwing down that Amiga love. Happy Sunday to you. I'll be sure with the resub. 54 months of subscriptions. Albie Shore is an absolute legend and VIP. Albie, thank you so much. Dude, you're, you're dude. You're incredible. Absolutely incredible. Carlos Jackal, Arcade Ages. Yo, 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 yo. Voxel Trot's going to be on the stream today, in the chat, on the stream. Porthal, good evening to you. D Mackey, I love the Amiga Dad and the beers, dude. There's going to be a WUG meeting this, this Thursday, by the way. Terminals here, Miss Wolverine DK sending out the hugs. I love the cyber hugs, Miss Wolverine DK. Thank you. Stream Stack TV with the raid. That is Jake the dog. Thank you so much for the raid, Jake. You rule. Welcome, Jake and Raiders. It's a pleasure to have you here. Everyone, go follow Jake the dog. Stream Stack TV. Super, super great guy. Incredible gamer. Just, it's just a great time, man. Freaking love that guy. KL64. What is going on? Uh. Ponter, Ponter Onan, what's up, Ponter Onan? Welcome, welcome. Greetings, greetings from uh, Greetings Raiders. Pro Tech, Mr. Wolverine DK, Brian meets World with the Stream Stack raid. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm just getting warmed up here. We're about ready to start, Raiders. We're about ready to start. Amiga Cami is here. What's going on, Amiga Cami? Checking in from the future. Greg of Florida, Phantom Power would be a great handle. It would be, it would be. Poetic Android, what's going on? Chris Doe is here. What is up, Chris Doe? Zuper Dan, boom. That's all I gotta say, Zuper Dan. Boom. Thank you, thanks, Chris. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, uh, well, I'm gonna show, I'm definitely, I'm gonna show the setup. I'm gonna show that stuff. I'm gonna show the Atari party. Amiga was well represented, though. Thank you, Mr. Wolverine DK. Texas Foosballer with the resub. Texas Foosballer is not just an Amiga Bill VIP. He's also a subscriber here. Like freaking Albie Shore, freaking Voxel Trots, Greg of Florida, freaking D Mackey. All you guys. Love all you guys. Yo, Voxel Trots just gifted five subs to my community. Voxel Trots, you are an animal. Thank you, Voxel. Thank you so much, dude. I really, really appreciate it, Voxel Trots. I can't wait to, uh, do a little Atari Party recap with you guys. The music is weird. Uh, we'll figure it out. I'm not too worried about it. The audio is very echoey. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can fix this. Hold on. Is all the auto? Is all the audio echoey or just me? Is it just the, is it just the music that's that's echoey? The mic's not echoey. Okay, all right. Well, it's all good. We'll get this party started, folks. I'll, I'll I think I know what's wrong, but anyway, it's gonna be fine because we're not. This is the only time the song will be echoey. Thank you all so much for um, noticing that. Appreciate that. Watch this. I bet you this. Watch watch this. Um, advanced audio. Pro watch this. Watch this. I bet you there's no echo now, right? Mic is good. Mic is good. Okay. Mic's good. Awesome. All right, folks. I'll tell you what. This demo, this is actually an invite to a party. And let me tell you something. It is so good. This is one of my favorite demos I've seen in a long time. It's super funny, super smart, super cute. It absolutely rules. Let's get this party started. It's Hale Muja 8-Bit Bill. Let's freaking go, baby.
Kali Muja. I freaking love it. it that, I mean, that's one of my favorite new demos. It just came out this week. Um, I'll send you all. I got to send you all the info. Let me just get some music on here, folks. Uh, we're gonna open up the hippo player. We got so much to do. It's gonna be awesome. Let's add some freaking boom. You know what? We'll do. We'll do the anthology. No, 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 no. Parent. Let's do. I know what we're gonna do. I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this one, uh, and we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna do some. Uh, yeah, we got some of that. That's awesome. All okay. Play. All right, now all's right in the world. What is up, everyone? Happy Sunday Fun Day. It's a pleasure to have you all here. Yo, Jake the Dog and Streamstack TV. thank you so much for the raid, Jake. You absolutely rule. If you're new to my streams, like the Streamstack Raiders maybe, welcome. I'm Amiga Bill. I stream Amiga stuff here on Twitch every Sunday. We call it the Sunday Fun Day. And uh, we, have, we have a great time here. We play classic Amiga games. We play new Amiga games. We catch up on all the Amiga news. because There's so much going on in the Amiga community. Every week, man, we gotta, we gotta keep up. You gotta keep up with the Amiga. Are, are you keeping up with the Commodore? Are you keeping up with the Amiga? Because the Amiga is just kicking butt. Uh, and the, the most important thing is like hanging out with all of you in chat, all my friends in chat. You all are absolutely amazing. Become like, a, like an Amiga family. And uh, yesterday, Yesterday, I went to an amazing party with some of you guys. It was called Atari Party. Don't hate on me. I, you know, if you know me, you know I actually love Atari. Atari 8 bit. That's because that's where Amiga started. You know, J Minor, Joe DeCure, and that whole gang. They started with the Atari 8 bits, and then they made the Amiga, and then Commodore bought the Amiga. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Amiga has, has some uh, its roots. Or its roots are in Atari 8 bit. So, I started out my Atari 800. I, I love that computer to this day. So, uh, my buddy Pete Fletcher. Uh, he hosted something called the Atari Party, and uh, the Amiga was well represented there. So we had, uh, we were playing Atari games, you know, Atari ports on my CD32. So we had like Marble Madness, we had Star Wars, we had a bunch of stuff going. And of course, Reshoot Proxima 3 just stole the show. We were looking at it all on Voxel Trotz's uh, monitor, which looks sick. The CRT looks awesome. So uh, I'm going to show you guys all stuff in a little bit. We may we may get a tour. Let me check on my, my messages over here. We may get a, a tour of the world of Commodore. I don't know. We'll see. It's going on up in Toronto right now. If someone there is available to give us a tour, we'll get a tour. Uh, we're going to check out... <laughs> we're going to demystify Abbey de Mortes or Abbeys of the Dead. There's so many versions of it. We have to like sort it all out. And then I'm not sure what else we're going to do after that. There's the real Tony Rocks. You had lots of fun at the party. Let me... Yo, Boing Max, what's going on? Let me just catch up on the chat here. Uh, Zemish. <laughs> I, I didn't, oh, I, oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Gateway is back. It's a great demo, right? D, D Mackey, it just came out, dude. Uh, so the, the opening demo was Holly Muja by Attention Whore. It came in first place, combined old school demo intro at Compadre 2023. So that was this week. Uh, and yeah, dude, here, I'll, I'll put the link in here again. Of course, you know, you know it's going to be in the goodie bag. A question for everyone who gets the goodie bag. Would you, when I make, when I gave you a copy of the demo, like a video recording of the demo, do you like it better? Like, set up just like I have it set up for the opening to the show with the workbench background and the Amiga in it or would you rather just a clean recording of the demo let me know what's up grinder cowboy yeah Miss Wilmer DK has got uh, a great point to uh, everyone new in the chat um, this stream is filled with people from all over the world Norway Sweden and Denmark is represented in the chat too I mean literally all over the world Europe South America. I'm not even gonna start naming countries because there's so many The Amiga window you like the Amiga? Okay, cool. Thanks Carlos Jackal. Appreciate that uh, Jawop had a great weekend at the retro computer museum legendary gathering it met up with David Pleasant Stan Wood and Rob Smith to name a few now back for some Amiga Sunday fun day Yo Jawop, that's freaking cool brother That's freaking cool. Um, so I had a great week. Uh, a few things happened this week. Uh, you know, so I got I got one pickup this week, uh, and that is Amiga. The latest issue of Amiga Act magazine, uh, which is freaking awesome. Where's my overhead cam? There it is. I got the latest issue. Uh, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, we played. Uh, we played, we played, we played, yeah, we played this guy. This, we played this game a little bit, but, I mean, but of course, we were also talking about the cover disc, Boom. Uh, Boom is Zeeper Dan's game that he made starring myself and other people in the Amiga community, other, other, other folks in the community, like Amiga Cami's in it, Amiga Dad's got a cameo, uh, and it's super rad. So anyway, I love, I love Amiga Act Magazine. It is, uh, an amazing asset to the community. 
this I you know it's so funny even though uh, Amiga Addict even though I get the digital copy I don't really I don't really read it until I get the physical copy so there's all kinds of cool stuff in here oh there's boom Amiga News reshoot Proxima 3 I love it we got some Christmas ornaments there all I love this page here it tells you like everything that's going on in uh, in the in the UK as far as user groups go here's the cover disc capers let's get a close up of that. Cover disc capers, we got we got the boom, floppy disk, and floppy disk label. I'm gonna be making that floppy disk for sure. You only got one sticker, Super Dan? I uh Super Dan, I'll send you some stickers. You didn't get any stickers, acid bottle? I th what? I thought the stickers came with the magazine. Zebra Dan, I'll send you a sticker, no worries. The real Tony Rocks, you love seeing me and Ad? Nice, dude. That was we're gonna check it out. Only one sticker. I guess I got. I guess I get the special triple play. <laughs> I, I will send you. I'll, Zebra Dan. I'll send you. Uh, I'll send you uh, some stickers. Promise. I got three, so one of them is for you. Yeah. I guess normally, normally you get one sticker with uh, with the magazine. I usually get one sticker as well. I guess he gave me. He gave me uh, the whole palette just because he knows I'm gonna make some extra copies of it to bring to events. Anyway, this is a super super cool issue. We got James Pond. Freaking. We had fun playing that. Uh, oh, this one, I always want to play this game. I gotta play this one. That's, uh, that's the, uh, we tried to play that game on my CD32. I gotta read, I can't, I can't remember the name of it. Boom. What's it called? I can't remember the name of that one. Anyway, I, we were, we were, we got Brutal Sports Football. Yo, Sigurborn with a resub. Amiga format issue 50 was published in September 1993, featuring 50 hottest Amiga products of all time, and a scoop on the CD32. Yo, thank you so much, dude. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sigurborn, for that resub. I really appreciate it. Can someone shout out Sigurborn? He's an amazing streamer here on Twitch. Most importantly, he's an amazing friend. He absolutely rules. I love this. I love the merch. I need to get some more Amiga Addict merch. I got the folder, I got the belt, I got the mug, and the coasters. I uh, got some pins. I need to get I need to get some of these coasters and maybe maybe a hoodie. That'd be super rad. But anyway, this Pleiades 3D, very very cool. I never played Pleiades 3D. I learned so much in the Mega Act magazine. Night Shift. Oh yeah, Night Shift is a. I love Night Shift. So you know we talked about this uh, a while ago. Oh man, Night Shift is a super super cool, super cool game we've played on uh, on stream before. Great review there. Flashback, we're talking flashback. I know the new version, a lot of folks are hating on the new version of flashback, which is too bad. Six of the best by uh, Saint Nick by Santa Claus. <laughs> hey, that's good. We'll have to play some of these games when the when the holiday gets closer. Roadkill. I, I, I learn I learn a lot every time I read Amiga Attic Magazine. Amiga 600 Accelerator is very, very cool. The Re-A4091 SCSI host adapter. Oh, he was showing that off. Stefan, Stefan was showing that off at VCF East. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, there's so many cool projects happening in the media community. I absolutely love it. Oh man, look at this. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this issue. It's thick. It's thick and loaded with goodness. Exclamation mark magazine in the chat will bring you to Amiga Addict Magazine, where you can uh, order order the magazine, physical copy, digital copy, merch. Now, please, I don't please is an old one. It's a classic. Night Shift, yeah, Chris, night, I got confused for a second. I, I meant to say Neon, I was going to say Neon Noir, because uh, we just had a survey if folks were interested in a boxed physical copy of Neon Noir. And uh, and I was like, oh, wait, there's Neon Noir. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, no, that's Night Shift. Tony Rocks loves the physical mags. I do too, Tony Rocks. Physical copy is the only way to read uh, Mega Act. Totally d -Mackey. Yo, remotely interested. What's going on, brother? Great to see you. So, so I, that was my pickup. We'll get into this in a second. I also uh, had a nice conversation with Daedalus, who absolutely rules, and he uh, he got me cooking on my. I got uh, I upgraded the firmware and the software to the Solus board, so now the streams are going to be even a little bit sexier, and I can show you guys how that works in a little bit, which will be super super cool. Physical copies is the way. CD32. I know it. Quantic. Oh wait, Pleiades 3D is on itch.io? How did I miss it? Oh. Let's, let's take a look, hold on.
Pleiades 3D, released September 2023. That's right, I, I, I do remember it. We did talk about this and I totally forgot. So Pleiades 3D, brand new, brand new. Amiga 1200 with four megabytes of fast RAM. It runs from ADF. It's uh, 490 pounds. Well, I know it is. It, it, I think it's a pretty complicated game, and that's why we didn't just pop it in and play it. But uh, we got to check it out. Yo, what's up, Lucas? Great to see you. It came out of nowhere. Thanks, Acid Bottle. Thank you, Awkward Aardvark, for uh, setting me straight. Remotely Interested just had a Pilsner released, which is named after him. That's absolutely amazing. Conjure 1805. There is snow everywhere in Germany. Wow. What's it like in New York today? Today is just rainy, rain, warm and rainy here in New York. So yesterday was really, really warm. So folks, let's check out. Uh, I'll take you to Atari Party. So a lot of the folks who went to Atari Party are uh, are here in the chat. They're are Amiga fans. We had Amiga, Amiga raided the Atari Party. <laughs> you got snow in the UK as well. Oh wow, very very cool. The Time Meddler with your ro your local retro infused brewery called Outrun, named after a Doctor Who episode for the 60th anniversary. That's yo. I need to come down there and get some Time Meddler. Remotely interested. I would love that. So let's check out. Uh, ch ch I'll just give you guys a little recap of the Atari party. Graphite, it's warmer and raining in Michigan. Got it, where am I, here it is. Let's go uh, here, let's see, where is, yeah, bam. You know, I'm just gonna go through the photos. Let's go to this, we're gonna view uh, as details, and we're gonna sort by type, and we'll start with the JPEGs. There's uh, no surprise there's snow in Norway. Yo, what's up, Animortal? Great to see you. All right, so here we go. So I packed up my exhibit for Atari Party. I brought a rad mozzarella, mozzarella, fresh mozzarella wedge. Of course, I brought Amiga Act Magazine. We never actually used this, but that's my dual stick joystick that you guys have seen me use here. We're, I was gonna try it with Robotron, but uh, we never got around to it. Time just goes by too fast. And there's the 1942 monitor. That is uh, Voxel Trot's monitor. And uh, I, I fixed it by stuffing a <laughs> a note card into the button. The button the, the button on the 1942s breaks a lot. So mine broke, the monitor works. It's just the on off power button that doesn't work. So I freaking, I wedged, <laughs> I wedged a note card in the button and force it to stay to stay on which is really really cool gemini knight oh yeah i don't play around i don't play around it, it worked it worked great right tony rocks pro tech it's a very common problem uh me me and that's corbo you know i don't know if corbo's in the chat right now but he's you know he's here on most sunday fun days he just got himself a, a new whip he got himself a new electric whip and he wants to like cruise down to atari party <laughs> so that's us cruising down to atari party it's corbo he, he might be in the chat we'll see there's uh, that's uh, Pete Wreck the Pete's son, Nolan playing some boom on the A500 Mini. The A500 Mini was a hit. People people like the A500 Mini playing some boom. There's there's uh, cartoon Amiga Bill, real Amiga Bill. There's voxel trots back there. There's my CD32 set up with the Marble Madness with the with the trackball. Voxel trots showing him how to play the boom. But oh, he rescued Nolan rescued all the floppies. He rescued all the floppies. <laughs> There's Zach Weddington. Zach took a break from Arcade Dreams and uh, came to the party, fortunately, because Zach's been stressed out trying to finish it up. So he's like, I need a break. He came to the party and hung out. You got, yo, Corbo, there he is. There's Corbo in the chat, my main man. The Amiga Mini is like, it's a great machine to bring to these events, because it's so easy to bring. There's Voxel Trots. There's the real Tony Rocks. I, dude, we got the best community in the world. With Amiga was represented. Amiga was represented so hard at Atari Party that it was basically an Amiga party. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There's lots of great Atari folks there too. Uh, Voxel Trots brought his his uh, RMC Retro Mister, and we we're playing some Ball Blat, some Ball Blazer slash Ball Blaster. That was a lot of fun, Voxel. I love this this uh, Mister that RMC Retro made. That's super super cool. There's uh, Thierry Mazzolini, AmigaVideo.net. Of course, he's shooting with the retro camera. He's shooting with the Sony camera that shoots onto the floppy disks. That's, that's proper right there, my man. Zach is a great dude, Voxel. I agreed. It, it took place inside of this train station, which was super, super rad. Yo, D Mackie828 
Yo, D Mackey just out, just gave out ten community subs, and Voxel Trials gave out five moments ago. Thank you guys so much. You guys are you guys are insane. It's not necessary at all, but thank you guys so much for the support, D Mackey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, I'm so lucky, D Mackey. You gotta get down to a Wog party or a Atari party or VCF East. You got to, man. You're close. You're so close. Thank you so much, D Mackey. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, man. There's Corbo. Corbo checking the charge on his vehicle. Zach playing the Atari Lynx, which we all know, you know, we got RJ Michael and Dave Needle. Creators of the Lynx. There's my man John. Big, he's helping out with Arcade Dreams as well. He's doing all the screen records. Kale64 said the shape of the RMC Mr. Device kind of reminds me of the NEC PC engine from back in the day. It looks cool. Oh, very, very cool. Kale, you're right. Totally. Yeah, uh, D Mackey rules, uh, ER. He rules. Although, oh, wait, that's the real Tony Rocks. The real Tony Rocks brought a TI 99. <laughs> I don't know what he was smoking, but it was cool. Uh, Zach playing the Lynx. Oh, this, so, you know, Crossbow. I used to love playing Crossbow in the arcade, but I never played it on an Atari 8 bit with a light gun before. So that was super cool, playing Crossbow with a light gun. It worked really, really well. That was a lot of fun. There's the ladies waiting for the train. Oh, Proton Fig. Oh, on here. Proton Fig with the Sid of the Week. I'll definitely check it out. Thank you, Proton Fig. Appreciate you, man. There's Pete. Pete it was the host of the party. You remember, Pete has been on my stream before. We did uh, an Atari ST stream. Our Atari ST versus Amiga stream. And uh, Rectum was on the stream. It was a while ago. We, and we might be due for another one. The 5200. This was cool, man. This is that new Atari 2600 Plus. So you put your uh, classic... Atari 2600 cartridges into it and it plays it. It's really neat. See, that's an actual Atari 7800 cartridge in the new 2600 Plus. Super, it, it was really nice. I have to say, it was really nice. Yeah. There, there's our, our, our mortal enemy, but we had a great time. Pete loaded up some really cool demos on the Falcon for me. It was, it was fun. It was, this one was awesome. The Electric Knight. It was a super sweet demo. And what you notice, a lot of the, the, the demo sceners who make uh, Amiga demos, classic Amiga demos, demos, we're talking Black Lotus and stuff. They also make Atari Falcon, Atari demos. So that it was really, really cool. Pete does rock, I agree. Voxel with the photography cues. I, uh, I, I, wait, it's Greg, I'm not sure what you mean. Yo, Geeks vs. Geeks, what's going on, dude? The, the, it was, as the bottle, the 2600 Plus was very, very nice. And the joystick feels like the classic 2600 joystick. It's very, very, very good. Yours is in the mail, geeks. It's really good. Protec, it's it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic system. Fishbot, yeah, this is a beautiful falcon that Pete has. Did I see any of your depth? Pro Protec, which group are you in? The real Tony Rocks, he liked the Falcon 030 as well. D oh, maybe Protec, we had he was playing demos all day. All day. So I have to uh, I'm not sure. But this one, I love this one, this Electro Knight. That's the ST table. There's me and Rex and Pete. Thierry, Thierry bought this this, this this wild Atari. It's like a PC. I don't I don't even know much about it. Um, ST. Oh, uh, Voxel was asking how I got the bokeh on my phone. I was using portrait mode on the iPhone 14. Portrait mode. There's the 2600 plus. It, it, I have to say, it was really, really nice. They did a great job with it. There's Miss Pac-Man, and that's again, that's a classic 7800 cartridge. They also have the, there's the new cartridge, the multi-cart. It comes with 10 games. That's what comes with the system, as far as I know. There's the train station. We had a great time. I love playing on a CRT. There's nothing better. I thought this was funny. Cannon fodder on the, on the Jaguar. They also had, I think, pinball, pin, either pinball dreams or pinball fantasies running on the Jaguar. This was crazy. Our friend uh, Paul, he made, he made, literally from parts that he bought from China, he made an Apple Lisa. He literally made an, his own Apple Lisa. Ha! It's incredible. This thing is so cool. This is the visualizer, the Atari uh, Video Music Visualizer. This is a lot of fun. I know, the real Tony Rocks. That was that was so sick, dude. It, it was crazy. 
there's my uh, my setup. There's my uh, CD32 with the trackball playing some Marble Madness because you know even though Marble Madness was an Atari game, the Amiga version is probably the best. Uh, then we had Pong 4K and Reshoot Proxima 3. Everyone, Reshoot Proxima 3 was, uh, was went over really, really well. Paul is a mad scientist and super smart. Agreed. He, he literally made an Apple Lisa, Greg. It's incredible. There's me and the real Tony Rocks. Me and the real Tony Rocks. Playing a little Gianna Sisters on the A500 Mini. There's a little Reshoot Proxima 3 on the CD32. The original Pong, that was a lot of fun. That was super, super fun. And an original it restored 2600. Really well done. I think that's it. Pong. Oh, there I am with the light gun. There's the gang, look at that. Me, the real Tony Rocks, John, Voxel Trots, Corbo, Teary. We had so much fun. She definitely had the best outfit. Look, I'm wearing my Donkey Kong shirt today in honor. She inspired me. How awesome is that outfit? Look, she's got the shirt, she's got the skirt. That is that is definitely the outfit of the day. Jake the dog, what's going on? Yo, Sarah, what is going on, Sarah? Great to see you, congratulations. Uh, in the news section, which we're gonna do in a little while, Sarah uh, released the Briley Witch Chronicles 2 for the Commodore 64. So a huge congratulations to Sarah, amazing work. It looks like we may be getting a tour, a live tour of World of Commodore, stand by. So yeah, she she ruled. Uh, they were packing up, packing up the truck, packing up the truck. That's the outside of the uh, of the train station where the the party was. It was super super fun. Zach, Thierry, Tony, Rocks, John. That was an accidental photo. <laughs> it's not so bad though. Up my nose. And it was just a really cool venue. Really cool venue. I love the train station. And then right across the street, there's Corbo and Voxel Trots doing their train spotting. <laughs> and of course beers, after party beers. So yeah, it was great stuff. Yo, what's up, uh, Thybrom? Great to see you. Yo, Nivrig is here. What's up, Nivrig? Great to see you. Sarah, Sarah, it's a well-deserved, a well-deserved well break. Um, let me see. Okay, close that. Oh, you guys, I can show you guys if, if you guys want to see the uh, the Apple Lisa that Paul made. I have a, a quick little. I mean, it's not a fancy video by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a little iPhone video. Let's see if I can find it. Where is it? Here it is. I'll show you. Desktop. 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 It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible, folks. 8, 10, and 11. Which one is it? All right, we'll start with 10. That's an iPad 2 monitor. That's an iPad 2 that he made into a monitor. How cool is that? He's going to explain some of it is in a second. I, I can't really explain what it is. But I just love that he, made, he ripped apart an iPad 2 and made it into a monitor. It's so, it's so freaking awesome. CPU card. Uh, this is the I.O. card on the other side. Uh, and this is uh, a new SCSI card that was created uh, recently. So they have new SCSI cards. And uh, this is the expansion uh, card slot that I made for it to give you uh, power, sound out, uh, power switch, uh, floppy breakout, keyboard emulator. In case you don't have an actual piece of uh, keyboard, you can use a Mac keyboard instead. That's incredible. Who is the monitor? That's an HDMI monitor. The monitor is a repurposed iPad 2 display. No. A repurposed iPad 2 display. That's freaking awesome. Paul is the man. I freaking love that. 
Uh, I'm just seeing, folks. I'm just standing by. It sounds like we may be getting a tour of World of Commodore. Uh, so stand by. Stand by. We may be we may be getting one. Here's a full tour of the Atari party, and then train we got station. we'll do the Amiga News. We're in this really cool train station here. Quakerstown, PA. We got the food. Mm, pretzels. Yeah, Billy pretzels. Pizza. It's freaking Italian wedge mozzarella. And here we go into the Atari party. And what do you see first when you walk into the Atari party? Boom, my CD32, baby. There's Dave with the CD32. I got the A500 Mini there, and Nate's rocking out on the A500 Mini with some Gianna sisters. We got Zach over here with the Atari VCS. I love this thing, I gotta play it more. Yeah, we're gonna try to get back to like the menu. That thing is cool. The real Tony rocks. There he is. Mom man, the, the free table. Tony Rocks ain't free though. No, you can't take Tony Rocks for free. I'm at least five dollars. You're $5 for Tony Rocks? That's a deal, that's a deal. <laughs> Nihai Spy, what's up brother? Great to see you. I went to an Atari party yesterday with a bunch of folks from the stream at slash Westchester Media User Group and then we're just getting a little, uh, a little recap right here. We got three minutes left. Great to see you, Nihai. Thanks for being so supportive, man. You brought the RMC Retro Mister. Pretzels everywhere. This thing is rad. The OG 2600 and Kong. Crossbow was a blast, Crossbow. man. The pizza was good, Tony Rocks, I agree. There's the host. Nice. That's a new game, right? Well, it's from 2014. Okay, so yeah. So well, that's new. That's new. new. For new us, it's, for us, it's brand new. Yo, Petite Sherry, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. And DMAC828, thank you for gifting a sub to the real Tony Rocks. Thank you. I love that visualizer. I think it's super cool. It's it's proper proper this silver. Is crazy. Paul Paul built this Lisa. Unbelievable. <laughs> so cool. E exactly, Cloaked Alien. Very, very true. The portable Atari, that thing was very, very cool. I'll be so sure. Cool. I'll be sure, you maniac. I don't know what this guy's up to over here. Thank you so much for gifting 10 subs to. to my community. That is absolutely amazing. I'll be sure, D Mackey, Voxel Trots. I'm just the luckiest guy in the world, man. Thank you guys so much for your incredible support. I'm so, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be freaking amazing. Thank you guys. Holy cow. Holy cow. There's a 2600 plus. So There's a, that's a 2600 plus right there, guys. It's really, really nice. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> we we were in too soggy yesterday, Cloakdale, because it was sun. It was it was like sixty degrees and sunshine, so we were we were all dried out. <laughs> Today is raining in New York, though. Today, today we're a little soggy. There's the STs. That Falcon is a beauty. Tony Rock says it probably cost you about as much as a new 2600 Plus to refurb and modernize an old 2600. I I, I really like that 2600 Plus, Tony Rocks. I, I, it was cool. Albie, thank you again. You're you're amazing. I, what a cool venue, right? What a cool venue. What a cool venue. All right, folks. There you have it. Atari party. I hope you enjoyed that little tour. I, I know I know it wasn't totally Amiga oriented, but you get the idea. A lot of uh, the Amiga folks were there. Amiga was well, well represented, and we had a blast. We had an absolute blast. Fish spot. It was such a nice party. Good vibes all around. I'm just waiting to see if we're going to get a tour of World of Commodore. I can do some Amiga news in the meantime. Uh, what did I have to tell you guys? Boom. Amiga news. Uh, Amiga Act Magazine. Check. Atari Party. Check. World of Commodore tour is brewing. We'll see. 
I get and, oh my I, I got my souls board set up. I can go over that too. Mr. Wilmer DK loves the ingenuity, creativity, and pioneer spirit about all the new computers and machines where people are hacking the original meaning, not the illegal meaning, when it comes to making something cool, like using an iPad screen. Old school brainstorming. It, Mr. Wilmer DK, I was blown away. And the iPad 2 screen, it looked so good. And he put those buttons on the top, so which did different things, like uh, turn it on and off, and it was it was amazing. G Techless, it was ama it was such a great party. It was it was so much fun. I loved it. Quantic. Oh, very, very cool. That's that's good. Yeah, because the old school, the old school, you know, coax cable is is no bueno. The voxel trust is they're setting up a satellite truck in Toronto for the live feed. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm talking to Ennio, and he said that uh, someone's gonna give a tour. I just don't know. I don't know how that person is gonna reach out to me because I don't know that person. So I'm just I'm just waiting to hear. But we can do some Amiga news in the meantime. Let's do some Amiga news. Let me just get this ready. And some Commodore 64 news. I got Sarah's game in the news section as well. It was what's the S E M C C upshift? It was a great. It was a great one. Yeah, it was. It was. Thanks, Asabot. I'm so glad you guys like seeing the party. It was a really fun party. Great vibes all around, and uh, it was cool because it was really. Actually, you know, it was really cool. Some of the folks there really didn't know Amiga because they were Atari folks, and they were like super into it. They're like, oh, you know, like I've always wanted to learn about Amiga. I never seen a CD32 before. This Amiga, this A500 Mini is pretty cool. So it was just fun to show some people some new stuff who've never seen Amiga before. That was really cool. Oh, Tower 57 for PC is on sale at Steam. Yeah, go for it, KL64. You know, you know, I love Tower 57. It's a great game. I play it on my X5000, baby. Yo, Pearly Gates, a good evening to you, and thank you, thank you so much uh, for. Uh, the resub. Thank you. Protech, is this... Is that you, Protech? Did you make this one? It's a good, it's a great mod, dude. Yeah, Proton Fig, that's a good idea. I'll do the Commodore 64 news with the Sid sound. Good idea. Alright, let's do some Amiga news. I love this, this mod, it's so good. Amiga news. With Amiga Bill. You know, it wouldn't be an Amiga Bell news section without a visit to Indie Retro News. And most of the news this week comes from Indie Retro News. And this is from Zendar, who also posted in my Discord. Roguecraft, an awesome looking Amiga roguelike from Badger Punch Games, is nearly complete. Now, when, when Zendar reached out to me on Discord, I didn't know. He showed me the progress so far of Roguecraft, and it looks amazing. But I didn't know that it was that close. I didn't know it was that close to being completed. So, bro, uh, so. Badger Punch Games, Zendar, and his team are getting very, very close to finishing the game. And this is a super, super cool trailer that they made. So uh, let's check it out. You'll see, what I really love is you can see boss fights in this video. It's super, super cool. So coming soon from Badger Punch Games is Rogue Craft. It's full screen this sucker. Let's go, baby. I love this boss fight here, it's super, super cool. Coming soon, badgerpunch.itch.io. Yo, what's up, Hoff? Great to see you, brother. Great to see you, Hoff. I loved uh, your stream, I even though I caught the end of it. It, was, it looked awesome, dude. I'm glad I was able to catch a little bit of it. 
I don't know, if you're streaming this week, I'll probably catch it, because I'm, I'm getting a little medical procedure done this week, so I'm going to be a little bit on the down low. But, uh, it's nothing, nothing serious. I'll be fine. But it's just, so, uh, but I'll have some time to be home and maybe watch, watch them during the week streams. May catch some Hoffman, may catch some Nagram, you know, the, 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 the weekday crew. I love it. So anyway, uh, Zendar, it looks amazing. I can't wait. What, so it says coming soon. Do we have like a, uh, an S, an ETA, you know, an ETA? The game features procedural generated levels, unique experience for each playthrough. You can do a quickie. You can have a, a Roadcraft quickie. Most games last 30 to 40 minutes to completion. Yo, that, I, honestly, that is a very, very cool feature because I, I love me a quickie because time, time is precious, you know what I'm saying? Glorious pixelated graphics and the lovely music by Sammy Luco. Awesome stuff, dude. All right, here is the link to the Indie Retro News article. And uh, we can go straight to the source as well, which is probably the itch.io. Yeah, bim. This was part of uh, the Ami Game Jam as well. There's a cool version of it. Boom, and there's Badger Punch on itch.io. Yeah, the music is amazing. It is amazing. Tone, you love the Tooth Blue reference? Totally. Zendar says, uh, no date, but maybe February. That's cool, Zendar. That's cool. I'm not, I'm, we won't hold you to it. <laughs> Son, no, no, it's not. <laughs> no vasectomy for me, no. <laughs> Oh man, Badger Punch cracks you up. A three-headed monkey. It... Nice, nice emoji there, brother. Okay, what is up next in the Amiga News section? Try, you know, because we were supposed to have, you know, Mike Borman on next week. He's got Krogar coming out, and he found. I'm happy that he found the bug. He found the bug, but it's a game-breaking bug, so he's going back to the drawing boards. So uh, he's gonna. The release got a little bit delayed. It was supposed to come out next. Sunday the 10th, but uh, it got a little bit delayed. I'm glad he found the bug. So Zendar, you know, no worries, dude. I, I know, I know you're trying. If it doesn't come out in February, no worries. We, we know how it goes. So this, this is this is wild, folks. So we talked about this last week, and we even saw the game. Abbeys of the Dead in the Indie Retro News Commodore 64 Game of the Year 2019 gets an enhanced Amiga version. So to keep things straight, folks, there's two there's two new games here. This one is in the works. This is Abbeys of the Dead, and I call it the Norwal version, the Ultra Norwal version. So we got Abbeys of the Dead in English, right? Abbeys of the Dead, let's go here, just so you know. Abbeys of the Dead in English, copy, paste. The Ultra Norwal version, and we also have the Abbey des Morts, just like, you know, the Commodore 64 game that we're talking about. This is the Abbey des Morts, and this is the Jeffro version. Oh, or the G Jeek Pro, Jeek Pro. This is the Jeek Pro version. So, the Jeek Pro version is is fully available right now. It's available. It's freeware. We didn't play this last week, so we're gonna play it this week. Uh, so we'll check out so many versions of this game. It's great. So this game is out now. The Ultra Norwal version is just in demo. It's just a demo right now, but it's, it's freaking awesome. And this is so we have La Abbe de Morts, Jeek Pro version and Abbeys of the Dead Ultra Norwal version. So it got a little confusing over there on the Twitter, but it's all straightened out now. There's also a 2015 release of La Abbey des Morts. However, I've not been able to get that to run. It crashes my machine. It even crashes my emulator. So we won't see we won't see the 2015 version today. But there's so but if you can get it to work, it'd be cool. There's also an OS4 version of the 2015 La Abbey des Morts. Maybe I'll try it on my OS4. Then maybe that'll be a good excuse to, to bust out the X5000. So total for the Amiga, there's three versions of La Abbey des Morts. There's the 2015 version for OS3 and OS4. There's there's the the 2023 version, La Abbey des Morts. And then there's the coming soon Abbeys of the Dead Ultra Norwal version. So man. Oh, the 2015 version needs Nivrig though, it Oh wait, N Norwal's version is out now too? When did that happen? I don't know when that happened. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Wolverine DK. I really appreciate it. I'll be fine. It's just a little, you know, it's just a little thing. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not getting snipped, though. <laughs> um, the 2015 version needs an 020 RTG, but Nivrig, maybe that's what, that could be what's wrong, but it, it does ask you your screen resolution and colors when you start the game. That's what I don't understand. It came out on Thursday. Oh, very, very cool. Proton Fig says, I'm no longer involved with Roadcraft, but I'm working at sound effects and music for Undead. Ooh, I will take a look. Hold on, folks. 
Hold on, folks. If you have a watch, you may know what time it is. You may know what time it is. If you don't have a watch, you still may not may or may not know what time it is. But if you don't know what time it is, I'm going to tell you right now what time it is. It's play a time, baby. Go down to the body. My main man, Playavelli. Uh, we're having a great time here, Playavelli. Yo, Nibri, thanks for that link. We're, we're talking about there's two versions of Abbeys of the Dead, the Abbey de Morts, that came out like within the past week. <laughs> and then there's an older one from 2015, as well as the Commodore 64 version as well, too. We may get a tour of World of Commodore. I'm just not sure how it's all going to go down. I'm, I'm waiting from uh, Inio to let me know how... A person at the event is going to uh, reach out to me. It's a good one, man. Play Valley is a good one. John Hare does rock. He does. It's, <laughs> it's so good. Knee High Spy is hilarious. There's probably a little echo. By my calculation, there may have been a little echo there. What's up, Dadler? Great to see you. State of the Art is, uh, is one of my favorite demos, dude. All right, let's, um, we got one more piece of news here. And it is, uh, is not Amiga, oh no, it is Amiga news, sorry. <laughs> I saw Commodore 64 and I got corn fused. Paulo is an awesome dude, he's an awesome dude, and uh, he sent me, he sent this over to me, but Indie Retro News, of course, also did an article. C64, the mysterious cassette, a new Commodore Amiga adventure game featuring music by Alistair Brimble. With all the Amiga game announcements this year, you would think the Amiga scene would take a break from announcing new games. But no chance of that anytime soon, thankfully. As Dark Age Software has just given us a heads up about their new game of C64 The Mysterious Cassette, a new graphical adventure game by Carlo Pastori, Paolo De Orso, Colin Vela, and music by none other than Alistair Brimble. To coincide with this news, on this cold winter's day, Saberman has provided a new gameplay video of the game being played, and we're gonna, I got it loaded up, we're gonna play the game today. Here's the info about the story of the game, which is available as a digital download and a boxed edition. Grandpa Marco had been a talented computer engineer, and many of his inventions had revolutionized modern life. And then he had a strange passion for old computers, objects that have not been seen for decades, <laughs> and of which may have even lost their memory. Oh, interesting. So it's about old grandpa, old grandpa getting in touch with some vintage computers, showing the kids what it's all about. I love it. And here is the source where you can uh, buy the game. C64, The Mysterious Cassette. La Cassetta del Mistero. A text adventure game for AGA Amiga computers. Nice photos there. Oh, check this out. That's wild. Haha. <laughs> this is cool. This is very, very cool. So here's the link where you can buy it from Dark Age Software. And uh, we're going to play it in a little while, folks. You guys like this music? It's good, right? Mysterious cassettes for the Commodore 64, the unlabeled ones. Totally, Dadler. Totally. Uh, Andy, Andy RCM. Yes, please. Andy RCM has got some great news. The Retro Computer Museum in Leicester is moving to a bigger premises. It's in the same area, but almost twice as big. That's amazing, Andy. Massive congratulations to you. Massive congratulations to you and your team. That's so cool, dude. Very, very cool. So here is the mysterious cassette. Physical edition is 29.99 euro, and digital download is 9.99 euro. We're gonna play it in a few minutes. Alright, so folks, we do have one more piece of news here, and this is Commodore 64 news, and uh, our main <laughs> our man Proton Fig sent me a, a SID tune to play while we are doing the Commodore 64 news. Let me, uh, let me grab that SID. Let's grab that SID, folks. Grab the SID from the Fig. Whoop. Good. Okay, cool. Discord. I match this over there in the Discord. It is. There's, there's Proton Fig. There we go. Alright. Alright, 
There's Proton Pig's song, LDP. Let's uh, head over to Indie Retro News and get the scoop on this new Commodore 64 game just dropped. The Briley Witch Chronicles 2, Sarah Jane Avery's hit Commodore 64 game gets a sequel and is now available. This is incredible news if you've got a Commodore 64, and thanks to a heads up through Facebook, we just found out that one of the best homebrew developers, Sarah Jane Avery, has announced that she has released the eagerly awaited game of Briley Witch Chronicles 2 for the Commodore 64, the sequel to a hit game which is not only a fabulous Japanese styled RPG, but it features Plenty of retro goodness that is sure to whet your appetite. To coincide with this news, Saberman has provided a gameplay video for the game, which can be viewed below. We got some still images from the game here. Here's what Sarah says about Bridal Witch Chronicles 2. It's a new RPG for the Commodore 64, PAL, and NTSC. Follow the continuing adventures of Briley, a modern day girl lost in a strange new world. Take control of Briley as she continues to explore her new life, aided by Smokey, her grumpy cat. <laughs> her grumpy cat and best friend. Briley Witch Chronicles 2 is based on books 5 and 6 of the Briley Witch novels, The Fallen Witch and Grey Waters. And if I'm not mistaken, Sarah also wrote the, wrote the books. That's super, super cool. Sarah Jane does rule. Voxel Trop says, with Vice, everyone's got a Commodore 64. Agreed. Totally, dude. It sounds great, Proton. It sounds great, brother. Maybe ask Sarah for a quest. Jam 80, Sarah, Sarah was in the chat before. I don't know if she's still here. Oh, thanks to the flame. Yeah, this Amiga Ball kind of rules. <laughs> thanks to Rob Smith. Oh, she, Sarah's got four more books to cover, so uh, can make probably three and four. Oh, as a guest? Yo, I would love to have her on. Jamie 80, I, Sarah is welcome to come on the stream anytime. Not everyone loves to come on the streams, you know what I mean? Some folks are just like, I like to make my games and just put them out there and have people experience them. But I would love to have Sarah on. She's so cool. I would love to have her on. I. I hope she works on a media game one day, too. Alright, cool. Proton Pig, as soon as your song is over, we'll watch the, the video from Saberman. Paulo said thank you. Paulo, if you're watching, Paulo, of course, my man, of course. You rock. I can't, I'm going to play your game in a little while, Paulo. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. No, J Jolf, I didn't miss the announcement. Andy, Andy said that they're moving to a space twice as big. I saw that announcement. Cashio and Amiga, there he is. I'm gonna play your game in a little while, brother. As soon as we check out Bridal Chronicles 2, we'll play it. Zeta Wing, Zeta Wing is incredible, Sarah. It's so good. Zeta Wing and Zeta Wing 2, fantastic stuff. Okay, Proton Fig, I'll check it out, sure. Great job, great job, Proton, as always. Good game, brother, good game. All right, let's check out the trailer for Bradley Witch Chronicles 2. Boom, we're gonna go here, yep, we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here, and let's go, Sarah.
I love that you have a cat friend in this game. I love cats. Fortunately, my cat uh, made it through. We had a scare with him recently. You can send in cats to claw the enemies. Oh, I didn't even know that tone. I haven't played Briley Witch. Full disclosure. But I played Zeta Wing and Zeta Wing 2. Oh my god, so good. Ha <laughs> ha, so good. Oh, that is a cool color palette. You definitely, you know it's night. You know it's night, a little twilight. I love it. Some moonlight. Is my cat named to be a cat? <laughs> good one. Good one, Gemini. He's not. He's named Sushi. You can't wait to test this on your bread bin, MK. You know, I gotta fire up my Commodore 64 more often. This look, oh wow, that is so cool. That is a cool character right there. I love no face and just the red eyes. Very, very cool. And you know what, Gemini Knight, his name is Sushi and he he weighs 22 pounds and he eats everything in sight. <laughs> Yo, D-Mackey, congrats on your kitten. Eight weeks old, you love him? Yo, cats rule, D-Mackey. They absolutely rule, congratulations. That's an amazing image. Sarah, did you do the artwork? I'm loving these characters. I love the mysterious guy there. I love Briley, uh, Linda, Lin, uh, Linda Ra. She's so cool, man. That is so cool. The music is fantastic. Yeah, Zebra Dan. I love the character art as well. Yo, Terrible Fire with the resub. Terrible Fire, thank you so much for all the support, man. I appreciate you very, very much. We're checking out Briley Witch Chronicles 2 from Sarah Jane Avery. It's Commodore 64, but you know, it's all in the family. It's all good. Sarah's awesome. And uh, we gotta, we're trying to convince her to make an Amiga game one day because <laughs> her games are amazing. And, uh, oh, so your, your Terrible Fire card for the CD32 was a big hit yesterday, Terrible Fire. I was uh, at a party and I brought my CD32 Terrible Fire card and we had, a, we had a great time. A really, really great time. So thanks for, uh, I love that card. It's so good, dude. Yeah, MK. Sarah's in the house. Daedalus 2079 is in the house as well. Daedalus, I was telling everyone about Solus Board. I love it. Sarah, you should totally make physical versions because we're all collectors, you know? We love to collect stuff. He's a, he's great. Gemini Knight Sushi, is, he's adorable. I love him. I love him. Yeah, Terrible Fire to see there too is, is going well. Yo, Chucky Gang, what's going on? Chucky Gang, great to see you. Alright, so there we have it, folks. Briley Witch Chronicles 2 from Sarah Jane Avery. Let's go to the source. Uh, this is... Uh, Sarah's games are also like extremely reasonably priced. There's her itch, that IO, 10 bucks USA. Amazing. Here we go. That's where you can go buy it. Perfect. Alright, Proton Fig, what did you send me? Um, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Boom, we'll do that, and we'll do that. How, how else? So, folks, do you guys want to see the, you guys want to see this? Yo, I'm tempted. I, I kind of want to show everyone the Souls board, and I kind of don't. Because, you know what I mean? I don't want to make everyone jealous. It's kind of like my floating boing ball. Everyone loves it, but they're like, I want one. Why can't I have one? <laughs> Yo, Coffee Cup Arcade, what is going on, dude? Great to see you. Upshift, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I know, Upshift, uh, <laughs> Miga X Supermodel. Oh, yeah, very uh, reminiscent of Ben Daglish in The Last Ninja. That's true, Voxel, very, very cool. All right, let's go here, boom. Let's, we're gonna, so we're gonna play some Abbeys, and we are going to, see, I'm, I don't know, so someone at, at World of Commodore wants to give me a tour, but I don't know who the person is. That's the, I don't know how they're gonna. I know Chris Edwards is there. I could I could message Chris and see if he is. He's there. Uh, dude, John, my solos is so good. It's so good. Um. Okay.
Protect, that would be amazing. All right, let's um, go here. Proton Fig, the video you sent me is like 50 minutes long. I can't I can't do 50 minutes, I'm sorry. Um, but we'll, I, maybe we can play it later. Uh, I love this. All right, let's play um, let's play Paulo's game. I know Paulo is is watching right now. What's up, Tin Spin? Great to see you. Yoji one, Yoji one. I I uh I watch, <laughs> I do watch back my streams every now and then, and I'm I'm always. It is this called Ghost in the Cly by Hoffman. Yoji, I watch back my streams and I always say, think about how they could be better. You know, I, I always beat myself up. I could have said this better, could have said that better, could have done that better. I'm a, uh, that's I do that a lot. Yeah, it, it does. It's called Ghost in the Cly. Ghost in the Cly by Hoffman. Yo, Abraxas, what is going on, dude? Great to see you. All right, I'll play a quick uh, Proton Fig. I'll play a quick clip for you, uh, real quick, and then I gotta get on with with the stream. Um, ch -ch -ch. Proton Fig sent me a video he wants me to show you all. <laughs> all right, we'll do this and here. <laughs> now this is the actual demo we managed to get it worked. Uh, Sprites were done with a, uh, Gary Kitchen's Game Maker, which means I had to use joystick yep. to beat them. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, oh yes, you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I see heads. Oh. I see heads getting chopped off, and I like it. I see heads Next getting chopped off, and I like it. Proton why I Fig. To make this game. <laughs> got off the heads. Yeah, I just wanted a lot of wireless, a lot of enemies on the screen, and. Uh, as much of what as blood as Proton Pig. As you can do. From now on, <laughs> every video you send me needs that, that, needs heads was, getting chopped off. I love it. <laughs> so this is a new game. This is a new game. I guess that you're working on Proton Pig. It's very very cool. So you can hit zombies with other zombies if you catch them, and you can throw them. And we managed that to is freaking awesome. Board. Is this a new Combo 64 game? Uh, and uh, also the notable thing about the background, it doesn't look like it, but it's a speed map. It's a scrolling beatmap that's been Proton Fig just started developing this game 33 years ago. Very, very cool. Made by Sammy Loco, I love Proton. it. We visited mm. Sammy Loco uh, with Pekka <laughs> and Lahti. Uh, and he did it in one night with okay. this routine, and it worked. <laughs> and we used it in a game. Oh, yeah. So the thing is that because you can only fit a, like one half of a screen on a beatmap on the top of all the animation, this has over 200 frames of animation. So we could only have a half a screen, a bitmap, so it was streamed. Uh, it was very common back in the day that uh, if you had uh, like some cool new routine or technical gimmick, it justified uh, making a game around it. So yeah. That's awesome. Oh, so a legend. Oh. That's, that's great. So here is uh, the full video if you guys want to watch it uh, offline. That's awesome. Oh, he sent me another one too. Here's the video that we just saw. Copy, paste. Boom. And what's this one? Proton. Yo, that's a that is a cool that's a cool looking Commodore 64 game. That's amazing. That looks really really amazing, Proton Fig. Very very cool, dude. Awesome, brother. Very very cool, Proton. All right, folks, let's check out Paulo's game. Proton, when that game, when Undead comes out, please let me know. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yo, what's up, K12 with RS Lauren? How's it going?
It's so good. It's so good. All right, folks. So here is the brand new game that just came out. It's called C64, the mysterious cassette, La Cassetta del Mistero from Dark Ages Software. Here's the link to where you can buy it. Paulo is a great guy. Super, super great guy. I did. I did. Pro Proton Fig, I linked it. I linked it right up there. Uh, if, you, if you look a few, a few comments above, uh, it's linked up there. Um, you can drop the link again if, if you want to. So, he, oh, I love this tune. Awesome, awesome. All right, so let's check out Paulo's game. Boom. It's a text adventure game with graphics, so uh, I'm excited to see it. It's in English and Italian. Music by Alistair Brimble. Passione to me said C64, the mysterious cassette, is a text adventure game based on the harmonious novel by Carlo Pastore. Really nice music. Alistair Brimble in the house. Commodore 64, The Mysterious Cassette, based on the book by Carlo Pastore. Uh, new story. Rome, 2060 AD. The dim sunset light seeped through the drawn LED-enabled curtains. The bedroom was not, as usually was the case, illuminated by images flowing on the LED curtains. A wide variety of colorful scenes that Marco used to admire throughout his life. I, the future, I'm, I love LED stuff, and you know we're talking about that. I was talking about that one of my friends who does like AV installations. How like, one day people just aren't gonna have like big screen TVs anymore. It's all gonna be modular, and you could just put all these panels up on the wall in your in your living room and just make like a huge TV. So, yeah, this is awesome. Passio and Amiga said Carlo sponsored the development of the game and asked Alistair to compose the music for the game. And Passio and Amiga, I know Alistair Brimble comes to your parties in Italy as well. I've seen him there. I don't, Amiga Mark. I don't. The music and the images are beautiful. Passio and Amiga. The persisting coughing shook his feeble body as the last grains of sand trickled through the hourglass of life. In the tribulations of those last moments, all kinds of recollections flooded Marco's mind. An endless stream of still life images, rivers, countryside, mountains, lakes, friends, meetups, hobbies, everything flowed in a mire that lifted the spirit bound to a spent body. When, when, you know what, back, back in, uh, in the future, when, however long, however many years is in the future, when I'm, when I'm, my time has come, I'll be remembering these streams, folks. I will be remembering hanging out with all of you in these streams. So, uh, all members of the extended family were present, some physically, others in holographic form, the rest through video conferencing. It was, after all, not the same world that Marco used to live in between 1980 and the early 2000s. Even the way one experienced one last living moments has changed. That's wild. I wonder, I like the idea, Hol holograms, video conferencing, I like it. Carlo was there right next to his grandfather with a distressed look on his face. He watched on helplessly as the melancholic epilogue unfolded and could not utter a word. He observed the surroundings, a mixture of antique and modern decor that characterized his granddad's life, exemplified by the 1900 style furniture lying next to the holographic TV the sound panels, and the LEDs that emitted 
a choreography of ambient sounds and lights on vocal commands. That sounds awesome. You know, I, in my room, I have, I'll have the, the dark wood paneling. <laughs> Carlo used to love spending time with his granddad, who in turn used to recount his younger days as well as talk about his beloved hobbies. In his prime, Marco used to be a brilliant electronic engineer, a key figure behind many innovations that revolutionized modern life. Crowning his many achievements was the invention of the the bi-quantum processor, with a computing power far beyond the processors of the time. Aside from this, he was also responsible for many improvements in data processing and telecommunications that advanced modern society by leaps and bounds. Despite all this, he had a strange passion for ancient computers with the letter A, that began with the letter A, devices that fell out of use for decades ago and that most have forgotten. Corbo, you'll remember too. Thank you. Proton Big, thanks for the link to Alistair Brimble. Always cheerful around others, Marco was a respected and amiable person. He had lived a full life enriched by many successes, culminating in a serene ending free of regrets. A short time later, Marco departed quietly from the world. Cool, cool images here. The Will. When Marco passed away, he left behind him two sons, Paolo, Carlo's father, and Luigi, Mario's, Mario's father. Luckily, Carlo did not meet Mario often enough to clash with him, and hence he felt quite indifferent towards his cousin. Yeah, Paolo, Paolo, I got a question. I feel like this. I feel like this game may have an, a personal element in it. I, I'm just, I just, I'm getting that hunch. I'm getting the hunch that this may be based on true characters. On the day of the reading of the will, the virtual notary scheduled a video conference at noon. Carlo's granddad used to recount the existence of brick and mortar offices and how a global pandemic had reduced human contact, resulting in virtualization of all major services and driving the migration of paper-based documents to digital form. Sounds like a nightmare. I hope, I hope that never happens. <laughs> I, I, a pandemic? Reducing human contact? I hope, I hope that never happens. Oh man, that sounds like a nightmare. Uh, everyone was on time for the reading. The screen came to life in a flash. Upon which notary appeared and with a monotonic voice enunced the few lines penned by Marco. It was a very succinct oration. The city house was to be inherited by Luigi while the country house was left to Paolo. Finally, one unusual item, a photo of which was visible on the screen was to be delivered to Carlo, subject to acceptance of the will. Oh wow, so Pacio and Amiga said the book is based on a true story. Carlo's father used to be a Commodore 64 repairer, and he passed away last year. Oh wow. That is so cool, dude. That That's so cool, Pacio and Amiga. I mean, it's not cool that he passed away, but it's so cool that you made this game based on that. That's amazing. Oh, that, what a great way to honor him. You know, what a great way. Older members of the family instantly recognized the item in the photo as an ancient audio cassette tape, but could not comprehend the relevance of such an item among the assets of their inheritance. Regardless, there was not much else to do except virtually sign the screen to accept the will by submitting to a retina scan and then wait for the peculiar item to be delivered home. I love it! Passion Amiga, this is really cool, dude. Oh, type in command. Uh, take. Mr. Wilmer DK, I know, I know. It's, it's, Mr. Wilmer, it's very, uh, it's a very emotional, passionate, and, you know, based on a true story. It's, it's really beautiful. The autocomplete is really, really nice. Oh, may you just use the words. Carlo was at his cousin Mario's house in the sitting room. It featured an interactive screen that was showing the cassette. And underneath it, a validation prompt. Oh, so I guess to so the cassette. Where is the cassette?
Yeah, I'm. I'm. Tr I mistyped cassette. Oh, of course I did. Yeah, the tape's on the screen. That's what I thought. Apollo. Prismatic rounds. What's up, dude? The autocorrect, the auto, the uh, auto, auto, autocomplete is really cool. Help explains the available commands. Look is a summary of the current location. Examine provides further details regarding the object. Inventory. Go. Take. Speak. Open. Use. Music off, music on. Save story. Oh, wow. All right, we got to think what we should do. It should be take. Examine screen. Thanks, Paulo. I need, I need a little help. The screen should a, a document to be signed via retina scan. Mario had a different personality, quite unlike Carlos. He was rowdy in his mannerisms and quite laissez-faire. As a result, Mario sometimes annoyed those around him, lacking the tact of silence when situations demanded it. Mario tended to be the troublemaker in the family. Oh yeah, we, we've all got the troublemaker. Uh, Mario had an ambivalent feelings towards Carlo. The cousins were simply too different to find common ground. Yo, what's up, Mixos Lab? Saberman, this is next on your gameplay. Oh, cool. Saberman, thanks for the awesome videos, brother. We, we checked a couple out during the uh, Amiga News section. Let's see what Mario's got. If you press up, if you press the upper arrow, it um, it it retypes just like in just like in shell. I love it. The anticipation was palpable, fueled by an immense curiosity, perhaps the possibility of some kind of treasure treasure of enormous value. Oh, look at that drone! Delivery, as expected, the drone reaches destination, accompanied by its signature shrill hum, heralding its arrival. After verifying its identity via a digital scan of his thumbprint, a hatch in the underside of the drone opens, allowing Paulo to take an envelope containing the mysterious item inherited from his father. Oh, wow. The secure envelope required a minute skin sample to verify the recipient's identity. The envelope included a tiny electronic brush that could analyze the sample on the spot. If the generic code extracted from the sample matched the one registered by the sender, the envelope would open, revealing its contents. Whoa. Uh, boom. All right, envelope. Rush. Unlock something. All right, so we're going to have to use the brush. Yo, Maya82. Three years and two months. I. Amiga love. It. Welcome to the stream, Maya2. Thank you so much for the resub. Maya is not just a subscriber here on Twitch. She's also Amigaville VIP. Thank you so much, Maya. We are playing a really incredible game. 
and uh, it is a very personal story that Paulo uh, made. It's uh, based based on his family. It's uh, it's really incredible. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by this. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maya, for the for the subscription. I really really appreciate it. Thank you for shouting out to me and Cami as well. Yo, one Joey full day. What is going on? This is called. I'll send, I'll put. I'll drop the link into the chat right now. It's called. C64, the mysterious cassette, or La Cassetta del Mysterio. And here is a link to where you can purchase it. And uh, the developer is in the chat with us. His name is Passio and Amiga. He also makes an incredible Amiga magazine. I love, I love that there's um, the graphics. The graphics of the game are really cool. I love that it's not just text. All right, so my 82. While you're here, my 82. During the week, I get I get a message from from my 82, and she's like, "Hey, my friend is at a concert. Have you ever heard of this band?" She sends me a picture of the concert. And it was, it was a band from Italy, Master Boot Record. I'm like, Maya, not only have I heard of Master Boot Record, but I've got all their albums on vinyl. I've got the Virtuverse game. Master Boot Record absolutely rules. And uh, next time your friend goes to a Master Boot Record concert, tell your friend to invite me, please. <laughs> I also, I um, remember last week we were playing some music some vinyl music and uh, I was only getting one channel I hooked up I hooked up a new preamp to my turntable and I kind of want to try it out maybe we'll do that next yeah dude Chris MBR rules Tony yeah Master Boot Records oh Nalpal I missed your resub yo Nalpal 44 months oh yeah how's the day been so far Bill Nalpal thank you so much I'm sorry I missed your resub Nalpal I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry um so, uh, Nalpal, thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. Quantic, oh, Quantic, yeah, Quantic, you also sent me a picture, right? Master Boot Record Live was a blast. Did we talk about that last week? I wonder where it was. D Mackey, yes, there's a WOG meeting on Thursday. Conjure, cheers, Nalpal, I need a beer. All right, use envelope with Paul. I'm, I'm going to have a non alcoholic beer today because uh, I'm going for my procedure this week and I, I got I to gotta stay off the sauce. The brush sampled the skin of the parent, extracting the genetic code. But while the DNA was compatible, it did not match the code registered in the envelope's microchip. Oh no. I, I know Maya is not your type of music. I know. I, that's what I'm saying. Next time your friend goes, have him or her give me a call, and you know we'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll get Quantic CD32, and we'll have a big Amiga party. Yeah, you did send me video clips too, Quantic. You're right. Uh, Paulo, pass you on to me, help, <laughs> help, look, oh, it's still in the photography section, I'm trying to remember, I, I know, I remember you sent them to me, I get messages, like, all over the place, freaking Facebook, all over the place, okay, if I go to photography, there, oh, there we go, I wonder if you were at the same show as Maya's friend. I'll, I'll look at the video in a second. The brush sampled Carlos' skin, extracting the genetic code. The DNA was not only compatible, it also matched the code registered in the envelope's microchip, triggering the envelope's seal to break, and in turn, revealing the cassette within. Conjure 1805. You maniac! Thank you, Conjure, so very much for gifting five subs to my community. I appreciate that very, very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Conjure, thank you all so much for being so supportive and so generous today. I, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah. 
<laughs> Voxel, you're hilarious. The cassette had no outstanding features. It was a Kloss C90 magnetic tape cassette capable of storing audio tracks. On one side of the cassette was a label with Marco's distinct handwriting, easily identifiable from the, the wide, even lettering. He had simply written Commodore 64. Commodore 64? What did that even mean? <laughs> I don't, what does Commodore 64 mean? I love it. Paolo often recalled that his father, Marco, had often talked fondly about his old computers and that he may even see them in action, but it must have been decades ago. Whatever the case, Carlo was likely the one who used to spend the most time with his granddad, hearing tales of these computers and the wonders of the elusive Commodore 64. Undoubtedly, it must have been one of his favorite machines. On further inspection of the cassette, Paolo knows a small scrap of paper wedged in the gap through which the magnetic tape ran. EX. AMI examine paper. Hooray, maybe a new clue. Another message from Grandpa Marco. And so it was. On the small scrap of paper, cle clearly written was an instruction. Read the contents. It was quite obvious that the cassette was the key, or rather, its contents. A great challenge reared his head, however. How does one read a Commodore 64 data cassette in 2060? That's a, that's a good question. Perhaps more clues can be found in some relative's house. That is awesome. Yo, Paolo, that is super, super cool. I love it. Yo, Krill Frost, what's going on, dude? I think, I think it would. I think it would last. I think it would last until the 2060s. Oh, check it out. We hopped into a flying car. That almost looks like New York City. That almost looks like Central Park there. Paolo quickly booked a flight taxi to his brother's house in the hope that he at least could help with the solution. He finally reached Luigi's house and rang the doorbell. This story's got some great Ready Player One vibes. Totally, dude. I got some old school cassettes, Brother Bill, too. Terminal Crotchrod has got a great question. Do tapes deteriorate with time even if they're not used? I believe so. I believe so. Here's the cassette we received at home. Do you have an idea how we can read its contents? A baffled Luigi studied the object while Paolo recounted the details of its recovery. The thought that a significant portion of the inheritance may be hanging in the balance due to some object from the 80s flustered him. They were starting to give up, it was getting late, and thus it was prudent to call it a day and go back home. I, yo, Passion Amiga, I think this is a good spot to, to, uh, to call it. I don't want to like play through the whole game, I want folks to like be stoked and hop on their own adventure. I think this was awesome. Passion to me, congratulations on your game. It's absolutely fantastic. We don't have many games like this in the Amiga community, so having a text adventure game like with images is super cool. And it's really, really well done. And I absolutely love the fact that it is based on your own personal story. So that makes it like a hundred times more special, and that's so cool. You you rule. You rule Passion Amiga. Here is a, a link to the website where you can purchase this awesome game from Paulo. Where am I here? If I go to my desktop. Wrong one. <laughs> we'll go here. I think this should do it. There we are. There's the link. I love it. So it's based on his real grandfather. I, Paula, is that your grandfather? Is that your? Is that the real grandfather right there? Yo, what's up, Arthur? Great to see you. Oh, Passion to me is a thanks a lot. I'll fold your lovely words to Carlo Pastor. Without him, there wouldn't have been this game. Thank you, Passion to me. That's, that's very, very cool. Conjure, you're awesome, Conjure. Appreciate you, man. Ah, got it. Got it, Passion to me.
But it's based based on the true story. That's cool. All right, let's go over here. You guys got some snow, some snow ho ho. I love it. All right, let's um, we'll pop that down. So, Quantic sent some videos of Master Boot Record. We're talking about them. Let's take a quick peek. Let's see. Oh, this looks dope. Desktop. Master Boot Record is from Italy, by the way. We are on the spectrum. What is going on? We are on the spectrum. Welcome to the stream. We just checked out a really cool game from Pascio and Amiga. It's a text adventure game with graphics from Pascio and Amiga. Super cool game. And now we're checking out an amazing band called Master Boot Record. They've been they've been on tour. Maya A2's friend saw them. Quantic CD32 saw them, and I got their. I know this looks like a floppy disk, but it's actually an album. See, look, if I go to put it in my Amiga, see, it's too big. It's way too big. Don't fit. <laughs> it rocks. Quantic, it rocks, dude. They rock. You saw them, oh, Locust, you saw them in Hamburg? Oh, man, I need to see them in person. I need to see them really badly in person. I need to see them badly. Um, it's a 12-inch floppy. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I mean, red tournaments are rad. You know what, Amiga Live, if you go to AmigaLive.com, Amiga Live has Amiga tournaments. I believe Amiga Live just had a Moonstone tournament recently, so yeah, we love tournaments. Kale 64, it's a big one. Oh, Axmo saw them this week as well. They're true of me, guys. I feel like I kind of want to throw on this vinyl and see if it works. I also, uh, we're going to play some Abbey Day Mortz next. I'm going to grab myself a brewski. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go grab a non alcoholic beer because I got my procedure this week. And uh, I'll throw on some uh, some Master Boot Record. Let's do it. But, although, I love the music. This game, the music in this game is so cool. I'm not sure if we're going to get a tour of the Commodore. Enio, Enio is not able to give us a tour. He was trying to hook me up with someone else who said they will, but I don't know who the person is. He gave me their name, but I don't know, I don't know who they are. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We, we like other systems here, even though Amiga is our favorite. We even, we even uh, went to an Atari party earlier in the stream. Yo, what's up, Ian? How's it going, dude? Oh, Ian, we did Amiga News. There's uh, a new Amiga game that just came out. That's what we got up on the screen right now. Uh, there's, uh, we, I showed you uh, Atari Party. I went to Atari Party yesterday, but there was a lot of Amiga stuff, a lot of Amiga fans there. A lot of folks in this chat were at the party. It was a lot of fun, dude. Uh, uh, send me send me a whisper on the spectrum. I don't know. I don't know if I would uh, compete in uh, I made an Amiga tournament long live Atari Yo, coconut 81. What's up coconut? Send me send me a whisper dude um, But I, I probably wouldn't compete in an all all round retro tournament because I to be honest it sounds super fun I'm just like really busy and I got focus on the streams This sounds cool all right, so yeah, bam, let's check it out. Let's play some Master Boot Record while I go grab my brewski and then we get ready for the next game. I love, how awesome is that, dude? How awesome is this? Thanks for the follow, we are on the spectrum. I really appreciate it, thank you. If you're new to my streams, like we are on the spectrum, I'm Amiga Bill and I stream Amiga stuff here on Twitch every Sunday. We call it the Sunday Fun Day. We catch up on all the latest Amiga news because there's so much going on in the Amiga community every week that we gotta keep tabs on what's going on. Make sure we're all up to date. We play classic Amiga games, we play new Amiga games like Paulo's Amiga game that we're playing right now, the mysterious cassette. Uh, and we, uh, most importantly, we like to hang out and just have a great time because the folks that come here every week and chat are the best. Chris, let's let's try it. Let's, let's pop in the MBR. I'm just curious to see if my turntable is gonna work. 
I'm gonna grab a beer and then we'll play the next game. I, I gotta do a little repatch here. All right, this may or may not work. We'll see. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, Ian. Yo, what's up, Colin Vela? Great to see you, dude. Great job on the game, Colin. It was really, really fantastic. Greg of Flyer, it's not a new turntable preamp. It's actually my old one. <laughs> it's an adcom. It's my, my old adcom. It, it's, it's really beautiful. My quintessential Amiga game has got to be Xmas Lemmings. If, if you're only going to pick one, Xmas Lemmings. Also, uh, Santa Rocks is my new favorite. Xmas Lemmings, Santa Rocks. I also like Fire and Ice. I like it. Captain is on the bridge. No worries, Captain John Archer. It's great to see you, and I hope you and Amiga Sons are doing amazing. Okay, let's pop this down, and we're gonna go put the needle on the record. Let's see if it works. Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot the, uh, the Master Boot Record vinyl is, oh, dude, look how beautiful that is. It's translucent. Oh man, it's so good. Oh god. Oh god, it's so good. Woo! Yo, I'm only getting one channel. I'm only getting, oh man, this, this is very frustrating. Maybe there's something wrong with my turntable. I'm only getting a left channel. But I'll leave it on for now. I'll leave it on for now and uh, it could be a bad cable. There, it was a bad cable. Woo! I'm gonna grab a beer to celebrate. I'll be right back, folks.
It's a, it's a Technics SP15 turntable and a Stanton 600EE. Let me uh, get a link to the Master Boot Record and we're going to play some Labby Day Morts. We're going to have a brief ski. Okay, let's go to uh, Master Boot Record. Here's a link to Master Boot Records Bandcamp where you can buy their music digitally or on floppies or on CDs. Master Boot Record had a Commodore 64 and Amiga 500 as their show for making music. Oh, amazing. Amazing. May, may your DJ, do you like the 600E? It's pretty cool. I, I might have to get a new stylus for it, but uh, I'm digging it. It's, it's, it's old school, man. It's, it's the right it's the right cartridge for this turntable. You know what I mean? Yo, Dave, my, is my soul twisted? Nah, my soul is good, man. It was great to see you, Dave. Texas Foosball is playing some Master Boot Record when we were riding in, the, in his truck together. That was awesome. Uh, folks, let me crack open this brisky. I think I think I'm allowed to drink this. I mean, it's non it's a non-alcoholic beer, so I think I'm all right. I got it a little bit too cold. Rob Smith Dev was here. Rob Smith said, uh, a quick hey to everyone. He was at the Retro Computer Museum in Leicester yesterday and it was amazing. And Amiga Bill, you rock. No, Rob Smith, you rock. Yo, cheers everyone. Thank you all so much for coming here every Sunday. I appreciate you all so very, very much. Sunday fun day is the greatest day of the week because I get to hang out with all my amazing friends. Cheers to all of you. Thanks for spending your time with me. Amiga forever. I'm the luckiest dude on the planet for having you all for friends. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. The Real Tony Rocks. Have a great one. It was great hanging with you yesterday. Skull, cheers, prost. Chris, I'm, this is the non-alcoholic version. Nutmut, what's up, brother? Great to see you, Nutmut. All right, let me uh, reboot here. Sounds so good. Nihai, nee nee I'm having a medical procedure this week, so I gotta go non-alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? It's better. It's better than nothing. Chris, though, that that center cap is awesome. It's a weight, it, and it's also it's a weight and a level, so I can make sure the turntable is all level, and it pushes the vinyl down. It's pretty rad. D-Mackie loves the master boot record. Play Valley, I had it all under control. I had it all under control. Oh, uh... What, what, wait, what am I supposed to send to you, Maya? Oh, Data taught me how to pronounce it. Hold on, I think I might still have that somewhere. Let's see. This this is how you say this is how you say cheers. Hold on, me, yeah. This is how you say cheers. Uh, Dado sent this to me. It's pronounced like S Lancha, S Lancha. It's the Irish pronunciation. Let's go. 
Slancha. 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 There we go, Slancha. Thank you, Nehi Spy. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, Ian, I'm I'm rocking a. Uh, I've got I've got a shit audio for Halo 2. That's what I'm rocking most of the time on my turntable. Jawbreaker for the streams for the streams. I've got the SP15 going into an Adcom preamp, and then from there it goes into my mixer, my Mackie mixer, and then from there it goes to you. Exactly, Harley. Harley Worgen knows what's up. He knows the shit. <laughs> I'll show you. Hold on. Where's my phone? I'll show you. Ah, I, I'm having a problem with iPhone cam. Sorry, I can't. I can't show you. Let's see. Can I try it? Settings. Uh, oh, there it is. All right, we're back. It got renamed with the iOS update. Uh, I'll start over here. basic setup I do I've got it downstairs in my in my uh, living room I've got an Adcom amplifier the GFA 555 it goes with the GTP uh, the, the 555 I've got an Acuras amp as well and I've got a um, a Marantz preamp Gemini Knight these two I love vacuum tubes man I love them look at those beauties Look at those beauties right there. The, my headphone setup sounds so good. I've got Sennheiser 650s for my headphones. They're so good. Voxel's floating, baby. It's levitating. Tubes rule any day. You know it, D-Mac. You know it. All right, let's uh, let thank you. You're welcome, Jawbreaker. You're welcome, Chris. Yeah, I mean, downstairs I've got a, a much more elaborate setup. This is just like my my office setup. All right, let's go here, and uh, we're gonna check out Abby and Mortz. Actually, I'm not gonna stop the music just yet. I wanna show you guys the upgrade to my Solus board. What were you saying about, someone said my Solus board was crooked. Who said my, who said my Solus board's crooked? So, uh, so Rob sent me the, the latest software for the Solus board. The Solus board is this beautiful uh, LED setup. Um, we can go over here to Solus control. I'm not completely set up yet. 
So under right now, I've got I've got it in kit mode. You know, like like Knight Rider kit mode. We can do Star Trek. We got breathing. You can change the primary color and the secondary color. So I've got red and blue. I get this will take down the intensity of the red a little bit and the brightness of the blue a little bit. It's pretty bright right now. Solid, solid red. Static pattern. What's up, Owl? Great to see you. Scrolling pattern. The rainbow cycle. I gotta bring the blue up a little bit more. Chris, it's a clock port. A clock, it goes on to the clock port. Ha, huh. yeah. Chucky says, I do not recommend full brightness at all. You'll go blind. It's, it gets so bright. It gets so, I totally agree. Oh, Delmore, I'm so glad that you figured out the problem with your machine. That's so cool. Rainbow scroll. For a rainbow cycle, you need to set up the RGB values. Oh, okay, got it. Waves. It's too much fun. It's just too much fun. It's too much fun. Lightsaber. Now, Anna Mortal, Anna Mortal, here's, here's, I know, I know about pointing the lights down. Uh, but the thing is, I have to, uh, I, I, I change my case all the time. So right now I've got the blue Asahi case. I'm going to, I'm going to cycle through them. So it will be, um, it'd be, it'd be hard for me to, to like mount it underneath the case. You know what I mean? I mean, it came souls plus the Bifrost is the perfect combination. Agreed. Level meter. That's what I use, uh, when the music is on. So cool. I kind of like Kit though. Kit is pretty rad, right? Uh, and then you can, you know, tell have the the uh, the Souls board. You can program different events. So that's just idle. Flop, when it accesses the floppy drive, when it accesses the hard drive, PC MCI access, audio. You know, that's the, like the VU meters I had set up, sort of. And idle. It's so cool, Rob. I love it. I love it. It's so good. Thank you so much for uh, for it. I, I'm so I'm so lucky. Carlos is not available right now. Solos only exists because of the Bifrost. The Bifrost is so cool. It was I guess uh, the Bifrost inspired him. Oh yeah, early next year. I better start working on the video. I'll let this track run out and then we'll play some Abbey de Mortz.
Master Boot Record, ladies and gentlemen. That was an awesome one. Yo, Quantic CD32, thanks for uh, inspiring me to fire up the Master Boot Record as well as my 82. That was fun stuff. Fun stuff. All right, so check it out. Before, uh, we were talking We were talking about um, Abbey de Mortz. La Abbey de Mortz. Oh, I got to get the Commodore 64 version. So I don't know if this is like the original version, but this is the first version I knew from uh, Double Sided Games. Uh, Abbey, Abbey de Mortz. Uh, Abbey's of the Dead. It's a Commodore 64 game. This is the first time I ever played it from Double Sided Games. And uh, it comes with all kinds of cool stuff. I love the cartridge. Most importantly, I got a... Oh, hold on. Overhead cam. Uh, most importantly, I got to put the ring on, folks. I got to put the ring on. And uh, there's been... There's been a flurry. It, it happened over there on on uh, on Twitter with Indie Retro News. There was a there's been a flurry of Abbey de Mort's ports to the Amiga, and we got confused. We thought there was only one, but there's two there's two new ones that are happening. Uh, one is called Abbeys of the Dead by Ultra Norwal, and the other one is one we're about to play that I've never played before that just came out. Um, it's a Abbey de Mort's uh, by Jeff Jeb, Jebro Jebro. So uh, I got the ring on. We're going to check out Jebro's version of the game, and then we'll compare it to Ultra Norwal's version. And there's also a 2015 version, but uh, it crashes my machine, so we're not going to play it. Okay, uh, original was on the Amstrad. Got it. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Brother Bill, I bought that from Double Sided Games, man. You know, you got you have to have uh, your finger on the pulse. got to have your finger on the pulse and strike while the iron is hot. All right, so here is Abbey de Mortz. Um, this is the, let's see, let me just make sure I got the name right. This is the, this one is the, uh, the Jigfro, the Jigfro version and music by JMD, who's also, who's, uh, in these streams very often. I'm glad I figured out the problem with my turntable. It wasn't a problem with the turntable. It was a bad connection there on my mixer. I'm so happy. You know I got to bust out my Monster Woody, too. Yeah, D Mackie, totally. Cheap fixes are the best fixes. I know it's an expression, but when it comes to strike while the iron is hot, I also get a Manowar vibe because in their song Brothers of Metal, they also say strike while the iron is hot. Oh, cool, Mr. Wolverine DK. Very, very cool. Manowar is awesome, dude. <laughs> Le Abbey de Mortz, Amiga version by Jig Fro, Amiga Test by Amigars, and music by JMD. You are Gene Raymond. Message, extra life, collect crosses. We use that, that sucker there as a checkpoint, that grave looking thing. Avoid enemies and traps. We don't know what's in the cauldrons or we don't know what's in the bells. Activate mechanism to open the doors. Very cool. Yeah, shout out to all brothers of metal. Oh, you've seen Manowar in 2001? No way, Judge Groove Man. That's so cool, dude. 13th century. The Cathars were being expelled by the Catholic Church out of the lounge dock. Oh, I, I didn't have time to read it. I didn't have time to read it. Escape. All right, jump over the spikes. This game is cool, folks. This is a cool version. So many versions, so 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 little time. 
Checkpoint. Let's get the scroll. Twelve brothers hid and died here. Yo, this place is scary. Let's, can we go in here? No. Nope. Oh! Yeah, Protech, we're gonna compare them. This is another version. We didn't realize it, but there are two versions of uh, of the game. And I believe Ultra Norwal's version has got extra levels. This is uh, this is almost like a one-to-one -one port, and Ultra Norwal's has got some extra stuff in it, from what I understand. Ring the bell, baby. Ring my bell. Prayer of hope. Neighbor, this one was not, this was out in 2020. Then how? Th I'm even more confused now, Neighbor, because I thought that these two just came out. The Ultra Norwal version released this week has a new set of screens as well as the original ones. But this so this one didn't come out this week, Neighbor. Oh crap. It says 2020. Interesting. But what about the Indie Retro News article then? There were two Indie Retro News articles one with the Norwal version and one with this one. The Abbey Day Moore, it's hardly Oregon. Oh my god. Yo, Tux2021, thank you so much for the follow. It's a pleasure to have you here. We are checking out two versions of the Abbey Day Morts. The Aminet date. Oh, May was updated this week. The Aminet date says 11 uh, 27 2023. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I understood this uh, this game uh, being new or updated this week. That's what I understood it as, but I could, I could be wrong, totally. Dave, is there a sequel to this game? I'm not sure. <laughs> Twelve crosses against the devil. <laughs> Dave, I can't even figure out how many versions of this game there are for the Amiga. <laughs> Let alone if there's a sequel. <laughs> That's getting to some next level stuff. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, how many versions of this game are there and when do they all come out? Craziness. It's one button. One button. So I'm just using the button number one to jump. Yeah, so apparently uh, this game was ported from uh, another system. The Ultra Norwell based version is now for sale on Itch. It just came out apparently like this week, I think like Thursday or something. Oh yeah, Harley Oregon, you played the Amistad version. The beep 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 sound. This one's got, I mean, JMD is the man. His music is really good. I'll play this for, you know, a few more minutes, then we'll check out Norwal's version again, so we have like, something to compare to. Oh yeah, I could use, I could use that checkpoint. The map is pretty intense. Checkpoint. So he comes all the way up. He just does that. Okay, here he comes up, down, up, down. Okay, he's gonna go up. That does not give me a lot of time. May I should take the low road. Yeah, you know what? May I'll do the low road. Yo, Retro Ralph with the resub. Ralph, thank you so much for your support, man. I appreciate it very, very much. We're checking out different versions of the Abbey Day Morts. 
I, you know, at this point, I'm just confused. I have no idea what and when they came out. I believe the Norwalk version we're going to play next came out this week. And this one was either updated or also came out this week. I don't even know what's going on. But the cool thing is we got two versions of the game, so it's rad. Terminal, I loved the, the, double, the double side games version. Commodore 64 version was fantastic. I really liked it a lot. Oh, I guess I can't go back up there now. Oh, I could go up that side. Oh, let's just go this way. Let's see. I don't know. How, how do I do that? Can I jump over this guy? Maybe I can. Let's see if I can jump over this guy. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. I got ups. There we go. You can also press up to jump, by the way. Well, the ultra normal version is English, Abbey's of the Dead. I don't know I don't know how to pronounce it. I need I need to go we need to go to Amiga Bill University to get a proper French pronunciation for me. Oh wow. I don't know if, this, if it's worth fighting him yet. I want to play some Bruce Lee. Nice Amiga Mark. Yo, Corbo, thanks so much, dude. Thanks for hanging out, Corbo, and thanks for the lift yesterday. I loved cruising in the Rivian. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Checkpoint. I get... Oh, I can't get up there now. That is difficult. I imagine that that, that guy's bad. Yeah, let's do this. Got it. An invisible path over a wood bridge. Is that gonna get me? No, gonna get me. Oh crap, I double jumped by accident. Yeah, you can't land on those suckers. I thought maybe I could I could kill a plant. You can't. Crap! Yeah, Corbo. Oh, Jesus. Let's let's do it, Corbo. I'm in. I'm in. More cruising in the Rivian. The Abbey Desmorts. I like the game, it's cool. It makes me want to play Bruce Lee. It looks like I'm supposed to go in that doorway, right? Do you think I can land on top of that skull? I've... Yep. Oh! There's a lot going on here. Should we get the upside down cross? D Mac, you rule, brother. I'm I, I'm excited for the wog meeting. By the time the wog meeting comes around, I'll be I'll be allowed to consume adult beverages again. <laughs> and I will. Yo, Iraq, what's going on, dude? Oh, no worries, Iraq. Good luck at the dentist. Yeah, Chris, it's this Thursday. So this is a really cool version, whenever it came out. <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh man, I got owned like a noob. Do you guys wanna check out the Norwal version now? Wait, I probably have to try and beat that dragon. Oh, let's go try and fight the dragon. I'm not sure how to get 
Okay, I'm gonna avoid him. Let's go fight the dragon. Let's fight the dragon, then fire up the Norwal version. Can I get up there like this, though? Let's see. I can't jump that high. Now, I'm, oh, I'm back down here now? Crap, I don't know how to get up there. I guess I have to jump over that Jason dude. Let's see. Can I get back up here? Oh, crap! Oh, Jesus. Alright, what's over here? Oh, it's this screen. Alright, I wanna... I was just, to be honest, I just lost my patience there. See, I don't know if I can jump over him. <laughs> it's giving you uh, secondhand anxiety for everything can damage you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Drop of water <laughs> insta burns them. Exactly. <laughs> but how do I get up there? Ah, that's how. I know we came in from the top before. I wonder if I can make this long jump. Let's see. <sighs> three, I got three lives left and we're going Norwal. Nah, there's no way I can make that jump. I don't. Like, how are you supposed to make that jump? Alright, how am I supposed to make this jump? Watch. Call me crazy, but I think it's, I don't think this is possible. Abby Rage of Quit. <laughs> La Abby the Rage of Quit. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Oh, I gotta go push that lever up there. We got a freaking demon here. How do I get up? How do I push that lever? Game over. Oh, you know what? It's pretty cool. I always found it funny in platforming games that the protagonist can fight through levels and levels of enemies, but if they get wet, they're done for. Totally, dude. Vector Funk, you're really digging the art style and atmosphere. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, Rick Dangerous, Rick Dangerous flashbacks. Totally, dude. All right, let's try out the other. Let's try out the normal version. The cool thing is both these games are free, and the and they're uh, bam, here we go. So this is uh, full game. It says right here, I don't know, I don't know where year 2000 came from, but it says right here uh, it was released on uh, November 26, 2023. Unless it was an update, like you said. Show you guys desktop. This is what I was just playing, the Abbey de Mortz. And uh, a platform game developed from the original Locomolito version. 23 screens to explore, riddles and hints to find items, around 30 minutes of game length. There's no, it doesn't say if the original version came out back in 2020. It's possible. It's possible. Here's the link, folks. It's a cool game. Copy, paste. Yeah, oh, Conjure 1805. We're, we're rocking the 1200 today for sure. All right, let's uh, pop this sucker out. What's up, Mage? Great to see you. Uh, now, see, I don't, the thing is, with my new case here, with my blue case, I haven't put my OLED on there, so I'm just going, like, one, one ADF at a time, so I'm gonna get the Norwal version now, I'll check out the Norwal version, and then, I don't know, Iraq came, and I kind of feel like playing Road Avenger or Time Gal, to be honest with you. 
Uh, after after this, it's just kind of a grab bag. I thought we were gonna get a tour of World of Commodore, but it doesn't sound like it, folks. We came very very close. Discs rule, Dave, but unfortunately my uh, my floppy drive uh, in this the floppy drive in this twelve hundred is uh, kaput, kaput. But I I've got real floppies. My other two twelve hundreds have floppies, and my five hundred, of course. All right, let's go here. We're gonna go to. I'm a big fan. You know, I also I really want to put that um that new go GoTech drive. I forgot what he called it. The one where you can have a floppy drive and and uh, a Go GoTech uh, connected at one time. I got I got I need to do a version. Of, I need to uh, uh, I need to do a video on that. Oh wow, yo, Quantic! Holy cow, that looks awesome. Thank you for the pictures. All right, let's go over here. Uh, I'm gonna go here. We're gonna go. Today is third. This is taking too long. Twelve three. Uh, we are going to go to games. And this one's called Abbeys of the Dead by Ultra Norwal. Copy. And I'm going to put it over here. The 2015 game we can't play. I, maybe I need RTG. I don't know. So this is the demo we played last week. You make me feel old with the real diskettes. <laughs> Do you guys see this? Do you guys? So I, I got to. Um, oh crap! I almost, I almost missed the slot. But <laughs> I almost missed the slot. That was almost a tragedy. Here's the normal version, folks. And then we're going to play something with a lot of energy next. You still use discs on your 64 and 128. Very, very cool. RTG in an 080. Dave, you know, that, that's you're, you're talking vampire there, Dave. You're talking vampire. I made I made some cool floppies here. Check it out. Check out those floppy disk labels. Check those suckers out. A nice little uh, bowling ball there in the background. Chris, I'll have to send you some. Look at that. Look at that. Good stuff right there. Writing a floppy and then making a label super satisfying. Agreed, Dave. Agreed. Okay, so this one definitely came out in 2023. It says it right there. So this one definitely came out this week, like on Thursday. I didn't even know the full version came out. This is still the demo I'm playing. You use ADFR? Cool. 13th century, the Cathars were being expelled by the Catholic Church out of the Lang Langudak. The Cathar Jean Raymond runs to escape the Crusaders. What game do I recommend on the CD32? Reshoot Proxima 3. Reshoot Proxima 3 and Pong 4K. Uh, if you think <laughs> 3.3 is rumored to be just around the corner, that's cool, Protec. Very, very cool. <laughs> if you think <laughs> if you think 3.3 is good, wait until 3.2. That's hilarious. Oh, my, my focus on.
Alright, there we go. Yeah, really nice music. I agree, Fat Ragnus. The jumping in this one is, is really smooth, too. It's not quite as floaty. There's more of a, an arc. For better or worse. You like the color palette, too? 12 brothers hidden died here. Now, I'm not awkward. I'm not cutting off anything on the left, just the word demo. Thanks for having my back, though. I'm just cutting off the word demo. All the gameplay is there. Gemini Knight says you can see the difference in the jumping, too. Yeah, it feels, it feels really nice. It, it feels really good. Good game, Ultra Norwal. That's a nice touch right there, too. You can hear them banging on the door. I dig. Interesting, the, the, the rats here are also brown. The other ones were a different color. That's a good question. Did the other version have the idle animation on the character? I'm not even sure. You might be you might be onto something there, Harley Oregon. I like this tune. It's nice and uh, peaceful. Erox said the full version of this has a second full ca Wait, the full version of this has a full second castle as an exclusive feature. I haven't had a chance to play it. Oh, Erox, is this uh, a Scorpion Engine game? The jump also has more of an actual parabolic curve rather than a linear jump turn, linear down. Exactly, Krill. I, I, but this might be this might be Scorpion Engine, folks. I gotta be honest, the Scorpion Engine, whatever it is, it feels great. <laughs> it feels really good. I, the other game, to be fair, the other game was really fun too. But this is this is super smooth. How am I supposed to do this? Like, correct, not like that. This is Scorpion Engine. Oh man, the Scorpion Engine it feels great. It feels great, Iraq. This is the Norwal version. Scorpion Engine really has the uh, the gravity, the jump gravity down to a science. And now we know we now now we know how to do it thanks to, to your awesome tutorial, you're on. I'm gonna use the crouch method. It's gonna be scary right there. Okay, we got it, good. Twelve crosses against the devil. Satan! Crap. Yeah, no problem, Iraq. Uh, wishing you best wishes at the dentist. Hopefully, uh, there won't be any crazy plants there. <laughs> Look out for any plants he named. He's got named Audrey. <laughs> nah, seriously, Iraq. Uh, good luck going to the, the dentist. Is uh, it sucks. So, wishing you all the best. I hope it. it I hope it doesn't uh, hurt at all. You rock, Iraq. May the dentist be kind and gentle. Exactly. Exactly. Go gentle on Iraq, Mr. Dentist. Or Mrs. Dentist. Oh, I don't have to do this anymore. I got it. Cool. No pain, no gain. I get some good drugs this week, too, when I go for my procedure. I hopefully Iraq will get some. Yeah, 
Yeah, the other spiders were moving differently. Yeah, you're right, Amiga Mark. See, there's some Audrey's down there. I should I should have done like a side by side comparison. I mean, we, technically we could. Crap. Ha <laughs> crap. That part is really hard. The multicolor projectiles are really cool. I, I, I totally totally agree. I don't know where the invisible path is over the wood bridge. We'll, th we'll have to find it. Ah, I gotta start down here again. Oh, man. Oh, you can jump through. Oh, that makes a world of difference. That makes a world of difference. All right, now we're good. That makes all the difference in the world right there. Should I go down? What do you guys think? Down or back this way? Can't jump up there. Come on, come on. Crap. Oh, the door was different too. Oh, so I wonder is the dragon like the final boss or is it just like a, a level boss? Yeah, no, it looks like an old game, but it's uh well, demo over. It uh I mean it's based on an old game, right? When was the when did the original Abbey de Morts come out? For, would you say it was for the Amstrad? Krill Plush says uh, this version looks more colorful than the other. I agree, it's a nice one. Mr. Wolverine DK, enjoy, enjoy your, your bowling ball chat points. Just enjoy them, embrace them, and enjoy them. Alright, so that was cool. That was our Abbeys of the Dead showdown hoedown so apparently this is a bit let's see if this is available uh, as a full a full version now but now I'm curious oh wow so there's the NES version Commodore 64 version MSX version this is said X Spectrum version and the PC version. It looks like it's fully out now. Sweet. Full version available three days ago. Very, I'm totally gonna buy this. Awesome. Dude, three bucks. Three bucks, little man. Put that game in my hands. If that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, owe. Oh, my love, my jungle love. <laughs> I hear, I understand, Mr. Wolverine. Okay, I understand. Yeah, Baron, I did. I have played the 64 version. I have. Hey, no problem, Quantic. Thanks for hanging out, brother. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I'm glad you enjoyed Master Boot Record. Have a great night. Yo, Mahimes, thank you so much for the resub, Mahimes. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support, man. I really, really appreciate it, Mahimes. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man, Quantic, I'm sorry, dude. 12 hours. I, I know, I worked a 12 hour shift a lot. And it's brutal. All right, let's. I, I kind of feel like playing 
time gal. What do you guys want? Whoa, what do you guys want to see me play? I was thinking about playing an Iraq game because I, I meant to play Time Gal or Road Avenger when he was on the stream. I kind of I'm kind of feeling like some Time Gal. What's up, Zybok? Tack car? I don't know tack car. C64, the Mysterious Cassette, was a really cool game. I had fun playing that one before. Oh, so, this, yeah, my favorite... I think those are my two favorite CD32 games right now. Reshoot Proxima 3 and Pong 4K. My CD32 isn't here at the moment because I brought it with me yesterday to the Atari party. Okay. I mean, are you guys psyched to see some Time Gal? I don't know if I've got Road Avenger on here. Let's see. Where's Guybrush? I don't I don't see him play. Tiger Glory. There's time gal. Weird, I don't have Road Avenger on there. So we'll do time gal. I just gotta do this first. Gotta save that chip ram. We need all the chip ram. Oh, Guybrush. Yeah, yeah, he's on the, the Pixu 64. Got it. Yes, you're correct. Oh, you know you know what I want to play? Oh, wait, I have Christmas games. I, I would love to play some Dodgy Rock, D Santa Rocks. Yeah, we could play some Santa Rocks. We'll do this. We'll do this. I'll tell you what. We'll do this, and then we'll play some Santa Rocks. Old school, Varen, right? Um... I was going to play Putty Squad as well. It's so weird. It's, I'm like in a time warp because I got this piece of news that Putty Squad was released for free. And it, turned, and it seemed like it was a new article. I don't know how I found it. But it turns out it was from 2013. Oh, no worries, Daedalus. Thanks for hanging out, dude. We could also play some Xmas Lemmings. I just saw that. Uh, so, Nivrig, I don't know if you're here, but are you updating the high score list for 2023? Yeah. Yo, have a good one, Dados, and thanks again for the awesome uh, Solus board. So this this is Time Gal, and I used this as the opening demo when Iraq came on the stream, but we never played the game, so I want to play it. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. You asked about great CD32 games. I'm, I'm sticking with Reshoot Proxima 3 and Pong 4K, but I keep forgetting Time Gal is a CD32 game as well. So here we go. Here's a great, here's a great uh, CD32 game for you. You know it is. I just keep, I just keep forgetting. I play it on my 1200 all the time. I forget this is actually a CD32 game. And when I first met Iraq, 
we had time got loaded up and rocking at Vintage Computer Festival East and everyone was just like blown away by it. Nice, we got hints. I like the hints. I'm excited about the new Godzilla. I love Godzilla. Bam! Just to DK, this is some good old school anime for you. I'm gonna go shoot the enemy. Uh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> this game's got the 80s and 80s vibe, totally. Totally, brother Bill. You remember when Anthony and I were playing this at BCF East, right? Anthony had a CD32 there. I'm not gonna do shoot. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do go up. We're gonna go up. Yes, success. This is a vintage Iraq, baby. I wish Dragon's Lair and Space Ace had these hints back in the day. <laughs> Man. I remember printing out the directions, like printing out the cheat, trying to like memorize them. Catch enemy with net, shoot the enemy, get away. Uh. Yeah, get away with it, dude. Yo, what's up, Dennis Bush? Happy Sunday fun day to you. Great to have you here. We're playing a little time gal. And then we're gonna play some Santa Rocks. I don't think I haven't played Santa Rocks with my monster witty yet. Oh wow, we're in the Coliseum now. This is scary stuff. This guy is big and angry. Crap, there goes our sword. Come on, girl. Let's go. Come on, girl. Oh, now we got a freaking Black Panther. Holy crap. That's cool. I like how it highlights the area you're supposed to go to. See that? That's that's a nice technique right there. That's very very cool. Now he's got the scary man's riding the Black Panther. Now we're shooting him. Bam. Oh, we got an extra gal, but now we got five gals. That reminds me of the uh, the mine scene in Dragon's Lair, for sure. Over the Dragon's Lair 2. I can't remember if you went into the, the mine in Dragon's Lair or Dragon's Lair 2. This guy's nasty with his whip. Yo, what's up, Matt? Say, great to see you. Oh, 
this is some this is some sleepy hollow grim reaper stuff right now just shot him right in the face shot him in the face baby that's right now I can't shoot him in the face because his head's gone oh crap his hand just came after us craziness Yo, retro game developer, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. I'm Amiga Bill and I stream Amiga stuff here on Twitch every Sunday. We call it the Sunday Fun Day. Right now we're playing a game by Iraq. Well, it's a game that he ported. It's a it's an old Laserdisc game that he uh, he restored called Time Gal. You can play it on an Amiga 1200, 4000, or CD32. He did this, I don't know, he probably did this like almost 10 years ago now, like 7 or 10 years ago. Oh, it's too late. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> the death scenes are great. Uh, I just felt like doing it because Iraq has since gone on to create something called the Scorpion Engine, which is a game development engine slash system for the Amiga, and it's, it's super cool. Uh, and I had him on the stream, and he gave us a whole tutorial a couple weeks ago. And I, I was like, you know what, let me bust out some vintage Iraq and, uh, and play the first the first game he ever did for the Amiga. So that's what I'm doing now. And then we're going to play a, a, after this we'll play a game called Santa Rocks. Get a little bit in the Christmas spirit. Santa Rocks is by Nivrig. Super fun game. And then we'll, uh, then we'll call the stream. Jump into the ocean. Jump on the ship. Jump on the, I'm going to jump on the small ship. I think that's the way to go. No. Bad choice. Bad choice. May I have to jump back on the ship? I don't know. I don't. I, I, with this maniac on the ship, I don't really want to be here. Iraq did a great job restoring all the video footage. Jump on the ship. Jump on the small ship. J I'm going to jump into the ocean. Maybe it's going to be hard for them to, to get me. Nice. Not nice. I guess we got to jump back onto the ship. Yeah, Dragon's Lair, back in the day, it was actually like hand-drawn animation. It, I really liked it. I mean, not the original arcade version. That was Laserdisc. But the, uh, the Amiga version was like Amiga animation. It was, it was, I thought it was really beautiful. I, I didn't miss the Laserdisc Don Bluth animation, you know? I thought it was fantastic. Jump on the ship. If someone poured Daphne to me, you could pour all the old Laserdisc games. That would be very cool, Voxel Trops. You love how the death scenes are SD versions? It's like standard definition. Hope for luck. Jump into the ocean. I'm gonna. Should we jump on the ship again? Jump on the ship. Nope. Maybe it's jump in the ocean? I don't know. What should we do? Jump on the ship. Hope for luck. Hope for luck just doesn't... Hope for luck doesn't sound good. I think we're good. We're good in the ocean. She's got some good jumping skills, man. She's jumped up on top of an aircraft carrier. No, 
Did that say 1980? It either said 80 or 90, I think it said 80. Where's Michael Jackson? It's like freaking John Rambo. Apocalypse now. Or some platoon. Male Black Hawk down. Jump into the river, go up. I'm gonna, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the, the, the water theme. I'm gonna go into the river. Oh no, come on. Oh well. <laughs> you have a feeling this is by the same artist that did Fist of the North Star. I could be wrong. <laughs> Compared to what this character is going through, Mario McFly had it easy. That's hilarious. Yo, Vincent GR, what is up, my man? Great to see you, Vincent. You guys want to play some Santa Rocks? Oh, we'll play some Santa Rocks, then we'll call the stream. Oh, you're an anime paradise, Mr. Wolverine UK? I love it, dude. I love it. I gotta download Santa Rocks. One second, folks. Find Santa Rocks, folks. Hold on. I wasn't quite ready for it. Oh, Turbo Santa. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Turbo Santa. That's what I meant. Turbo Santa. Turbo Santa DX22. Turbo Santa DX22 neighborhood. Let's freaking go, baby. We'll get into the Christmas spirit now, folks. <laughs> 